and here it is uh, on the Canadian National Climate Archive. And just in case you're not aware about archives and things, uh, we do have a person on the on the on the one of our listeners is uh, Jim Baker, who's an old colleague of mine who used to be the head of NOAA back in the Bill Clinton era, and Jim has joined it at my invitation. Uh, and uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, he knows all about these kind of things. So over to you, Anna. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Deptustav, and it is my privilege to present the results of the work of all of the authors of this paper. That's mean, except me, Chris Kosak, Brian Vanamaker from CSCAN International Incorporated, and Haoli Content Interface Corporation. Next, please. Let me start with acknowledging all who contributed to the success. That is my MSc Management, Innovation and Youth Engagement Division Future Fund Group, University of Western Ontario Libraries and Archives, Public Services and Procurement Canada, METAN, Quebec team, Corporate Services Financial Branch, as well as Administrative and Procurement local team, uh, university students, and casual. In addition, let me thank CIMO's pre organizer, especially Professor Gordon McBean, for making this event possible. Next. Today, I will touch on Canadian Climate Archives, both hard copy and digital, long-term preservation, digitization, and uh, prospect for online access to our resources. Next. For over 180 years, thousands of weather observers and volunteers have recorded weather data and information at thousands of climate stations ac across Canada. This vast collection of climate data is stored within the National Climate Archives, and that is our Canadian national treasure. Our work is to ensure that these efforts are preserved and ac accessible for all to use. Next, please. Taking weather observations was a huge effort over many years. Next, please. Climate Hard Copy Archives preserves these records, these efforts, in the data logs, in the meteorological forms, and microfilms. I wanted to point out that paper and microfilms, when stored properly, can endure over 500 years. Next, please. The digital climate archives holds over 3 million of different original meteorological forms. However, presently, they, are, they can be accessed only through internal network and only for one page at the time. Next, please. The collection of the 2304 forms going back to 1840s represents the the most complete and longest national series of recorded observations. This is very special and very important collection for us. 2304 is monthly form with a day, daily temperature and precipitation data taken once or twice per day. Next, please. Over the 180 years, daily forms went through many format changes and as you can expect. This picture illustrated the daily forms evolution over the years. Most recently, as part of our scanning project, we actually started capturing the form number and form name. This will allow us in the future to trace the evolution of meteorological forms in Canada. Next, please. While forms were changing over the time, 
the handwriting was changing even faster. Over the years, temperature and precipitation values were keyed and entered to the National Climate Archives. The manual key punching of all 2304 data proved to be very costly in terms of time and resources. Digitizing using the optical character recognition would be impossible to achieve with an acceptable degree of precision for these types of documents. The automated OCR process would face a number of challenges, including the variety of the handwriting, meteorological symbols, writing outside the expected area, and so on. Manual review and revision of all forms would always need to be applied. Knowing that, we believe that creating a quality scan that provides a true copy of the original form and offering easy users access to those scans seems to be the most preferable approach. Next, please. Two developments happened during the last few years, which were breakthrough in our effort to provide access to the 2304 collection. Firstly, Treasury Board funding to digitize the historical portion, historical means from 1840 to 1960, of the 2304 collection. This historical portion of the collection is presently stored in a modern, state-of-the-art archive facility located at the University of Western Ontario. The university is archiving about 900 boxes of 2304 forms representing close to 3,000 climate stations. The second breakthrough was due to the due to the Environment and Climate Change Canada Innovative Future Fund Award that allowed us to adopt commercial off-the-shelf multimedia access software to develop the innovative visual interactive quality assurance tools called Vika Tools. Vika Tools ensure that only good quality scans will enter into the climate archive. This project will add about an additional 1 million meteorological form scans to the National Climate Archives, assuring reliable historical record preservation. The next slide will show video on how the VCA tools works. Next uh, slide and video, please. This short video illustrates the interactive portion of the quality assurance process. What we're showing here is a selection of uh, the second group of 500 forms from the Yukon. You can access all of the forms with the slider control at the bottom. Very quickly, notice the different aspect ratios of the forms, even in this one set of 500. You can access the forms also, step through them automatically with a play pause button to speed things up uh, a bit, and also once paused, and can step forward one at a time. We look, scan through here, we see an obvious uh, blank button or a blank form. Uh, press on the B button, sends that to the, to the blanks and shows the form name that's been recorded and steps forward by one. Similarly, there are forms that need to be sent to a senior archivist for review or for some other action. And here's one, for example, where it appears as though the entire platter of the scanner was saved, just the form itself. But all the information is still there. So that one will be sent for review and clipping before being sent to the archive. So. At any point, the analyst can review the process or the progress by looking first at the at the blanks. Quickest way to do this is with the uh, automatic playthrough and speed it up. And this takes care of the case where there's been some finger trouble and this one was put in by mistake. 
So this is saved back to the uh, original forms. For the review, uh, the archivist will go through more slowly. There are four that need to be clipped and can zoom in to look at details to see whether this form should be recorded in the, in the archive. So in short, the quality assurance process start with the batch of 500 raw scans to work with at one session. 500 is arbitrary number. Images go through the enhancement run to improve their contrast and readability. Then all scans are QA using Vika tools. After that, we end up with a smaller set of good quality scans ready to be uploaded to the National Climate Archives. Next, please. While continuing the digitalization and QA process, we hope to start working on providing access. Building on the experience with Vika tools and the off-the-shelf access software, we expect that further experimentation and expansion of this innovative approach will work towards better access to all climate digital collections. This could make environment and climate change 180 years legacy of weather and climate data observation accessible to the large audience. There may be actually many ways to access climate data by station, by year, alphabetically, by region, and so on. Now we will demonstrate interface using Canadian map. Next slide, please. This video illustrates how we might use the same tools to build an interface that allows a user to access and explore information that has already been stored in an archive, in this case, principal station data. Using a touch screen and a map of Canada showing the locations, we go to one of the station locations, click on it, and immediately have access to a 48-page report from that station. Each page and each chart on each page is immediately accessible for use. We can step out to the map again, pick another location, say Comox, and again have immediate access to that 48 page station report. Or fly out and across the country to Goose Bay and similarly access the report from there. Or we can use the slider control to access any of the 136 reports that have been archived. So leveraging the current digitalization experience, we would, would allow us to extend that quick access capability across Environment Canada network and later to extend that effort to internet online access in line with the open data initiative. This could make this climate data readily available nationally and internationally to research scientists, engineers, academics, and to the public. Exactly the same process could be implemented for other digitized data collections, such as weather maps, other records, documents, or videos. Next, please. In summary, we are actively operating ever-growing archives, both hard copy and digital. We are establishing quality process to ensure that only good scans enter into the climate archives. And we are ready to start working on effective and efficient online access to these important forms. If you are interested in access to these data sets or have records that would benefit from very similar approach, please do not hesitate to contact either Chris Kosak or myself. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Anna. Uh, this You're was welcome. very interesting and very historic. Uh, and looking ahead, I 
uh, I think, uh, again, we're running behind schedule overall, so uh, I don't have any questions lined up here on the chat box, except to say that I think it's clear, um, no, there, well, actually, there was a question um, about the availability to researchers. If you could give a very short answer to that one, and then we'll move on to Rene. So what was the question? The, the question was asked by Victoria on, are any of these metadata station reports currently available to researchers? Um, well, temperature and precipitation data are available on the climate data online, but the forms, uh, they can be made available for someone who asks, who knows where they are. I can always send you the, the digital scans, but not quite yet. Um, we hope to make them more accessible and available in the future. Good. Thank you very much. 